Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. It's great to be back with everybody. And um, let's see, Dr. Liz Lister. Yes, you're here. How are you doing? <laughs> Thank you. How are you? Great. <laughs> Hey, you surprised Art. He did. Obviously, he was was not expecting you to be here. <laughs> I was. I was uh, absolutely Liz, it's always delighted. Good to see you. I was overcome with delight. <laughs> um, one of my favorite topics is sex. <laughs> I can't imagine why, um, but because you're the hormone doctor, that's the way I think of you. You're a specialist in hormones and and uh, therapy. Um, Sex, libido, the human libido, we, we always uh, tend to say, you know, male, men are different than women. But has the, has the science and the, uh, is there a new way of looking? Do we ever change our attitude, scientifically I'm talking about, uh, about how the libido, human libido works? Does that ever get changed? Is it different now than it was, I don't know, 100 years ago or even 10 years ago? Yes. Absolutely. Yes, it has, in fact, evolved. A lot of people have heard of Masters and Johnson, who did their research in the 50s and 60s. Sure. And, and the, the most of their research around then, people have seen the show, so people are more aware of that. And they were the first ones to really do structured research on the human sexual response, which, of course, was very pioneering and groundbreaking of them to do. And of course, controversial at the time. However, they came up with a model that a lot of people are familiar with, which is a very, it's a linear model where first you have to think about sex. It has to occur to you that you want to pursue sex. Then the body gets aroused. Then you pursue sexual activity. Then there's orgasm. And then there's a resolution phase. So they were the first to describe that process which was a breakthrough, all right? However, to your question, what has happened over the decades since then is a rethinking of this. Uh, and this is what I see in my practice all the time, is that women perceive that they are lacking libido because they are not spontaneously thinking about sex and then being driven to pursue it in that stepwise fashion mm. Mm. so I, I that must be another breakthrough a more modern breakthrough obviously um, because I think of all those poor women who thought they had no libido or it wasn't working because it didn't follow the what was then the new brand new breakthrough model of Masters and Johnson exactly. so what is what is the new model if it's not a linear, and it doesn't start with thinking about sex. Right, exactly. So it's really, and, and I love this because as you know, you've got the male symbol is the circle with the arrow with the in the direction, and the yes. female is the circle. Okay, so yes. the, new more, the newer model is a circular approach, more like a cycle. Okay, and oh. we know cycles are very much a part of women's lives. Yes. So I really like this model, and I like the graphic that we have to share with your audience, which shows ah. a lot of different entry points that can lead to a satisfying sex life. All right, and by the All way... Right, so I always like to make a little comment that libido is not only about sex. We're talking here specifically about this and sex and sexual function. However, libido has to do with motivation and drive. And my observation is that a satisfying sex life is usually part of a generally uh, happy and satisfying life of motivation and pursuing goals in, in other areas as well. So I just want to give a shout out to libido in its larger context and not, not only about sex. Yeah, well, you know, I think that's important because we do, uh, most of our body and our life is intertwined. You know, it's hard to separate any one thing just in 
talk about and isolate it. So um, I think it's important to to put libido into perspective, you know, but, how but important it is to us. Just because we're here, and it was a great illustration uh, that you showed us, uh, we're guys, and so there's a difference between male and female libido, but why don't we just give this one over to the women, and maybe you can explain a little bit more in detail so that they can so, actually get something out of this other than uh, John and Art bantering about uh, libido. Uh, so could you maybe give a little bit more detail of what this new view of uh, uh, libido is for women? Absolutely. What I love about this graphic is that you can see that, as I said, all these different entry points. Okay. One of the questions that I ask women when they say they have that they lack libido is I say, okay, so I got that. You, you are not feeling motivated or, or driven to pursue sexual activity. However, when you do have sex, does your body respond? Okay, and this is a good kind of a triage question for me, because if they say, oh yeah, then I'm fine. Then we can come to a graphic one and we can see all these different entry points. Okay, so for example, the one at the top about emotional intimacy. Okay, way women, we, we sort of start more in our heart center before the lower areas of sexual stimulation take place, all right? Whereas for men, it might be the other direction. But again, to focus on the women, part of intimacy is feeling safe. So that's where that part of the equation comes in, okay? And then right before that is emotional and physical satisfaction. I'm not even sure these arrows only go in one direction, Okay. That's a good I, point. Yeah. I, I really think that they all relate to each other, which they kind of cover when they talk about biological and psychological down in the lower right part that can also lead to sexual arousal. Okay. Again, it can be, and it really always has to do with communication as well. I'm not sure where I would put that. I would, I would probably put that in there in emotional satisfaction with the relationship. If they are, is the, if the couple is communicating with each other well. Yeah. On this chart, Dr. Liz, is the, I'm looking at the lower right-hand corner, biological, physiological. Is that the traditional Masters and Johnson entry point? Is that what um, that represents? Yes. Most likely the psychological, where the desire has to be first. And I think that comes also in the middle, John, where it says spontaneous sexual drive. Yes. All right. Whereas that might be more common for men, whereas for women it has all these other components. You know, I, I there's another fun graphic that shows uh, men's libido with an on-off switch, and then for women it's a console with all these knobs and dials and <laughs> groups about sex and libido and balance hormones. Yeah. I like to show that one. That one always gets a chuckle. Yeah, I can imagine it, it would, yeah. Well, this is a great chart. Um, visuals sometimes are really helpful, aren't they? Yes. So uh, so this seems to give you an opportunity in discussing this with uh, women who uh, are concerned about uh, their response and things like that. Uh, a couple of different places to talk about where hormones might fit in to help uh, overcome blockages, if you will, uh, or things right. that are preventing them from enjoying this. So um, can you just give us some a little bit of uh, uh, insight as to the different kinds of ways that you would approach uh, somebody now that you have this other in understanding that you can share with them? Yes, definitely. Thank you for asking that, because as you know, that's my full-time work is talking about the hormones and the balanced hormones. And so estrogen is very important in terms of the woman's body's response. Uh, and women don't have to use estrogen in their whole body. They might just use vaginal estrogen for the tissues to be in good shape, which does not uh, influence the rest of their bodies. Then also testosterone. A lot of people don't realize that women have, that we have testosterone in our bodies and that we benefit greatly from it, right? People think about it in terms of libido, but it really helps 
I'm going to say, I call testosterone the confidence hormone, feeling confident, feeling good about ourselves, all right? Hormones in balance also contribute to being able to achieve and maintain a healthy weight. For women, that's really a big deal. They, if, they're, if they're not happy and don't feel good and they don't feel healthy in their bodies because of weight, because of carrying extra weight, getting the hormones in balance, getting that extra weight off in a healthy way is going to help her feel more confident which is then going to feed into this cycle. Hmm. Uh, I love th I love this chart because it's uh, it's such a easy way to understand that that when you say linear versus a cycle, yes. um, uh, that's great. Yeah, me too. I, I, I like it so much. I I Liz, I imagine that this has been a big. A breakthrough for you and other medical professionals to help women. Yes. Yes. I'll share another little piece from my practice that what, what I was sharing earlier that when I ask women, once things get started, do you enjoy it? And they often, even though they just said they have low libido, they will tell me, yeah, they're fine once things are underway. And again, as you pointed out, I love this graphic also because it's, it explains that phenomenon. So that if women can influence their schedule and their environment and get enough sleep and feel receptive to these types of psychological stimuli, then that's going to help the cause of libido and intimacy in their relationships. Now you have a blog that you uh, produce, uh, as well as lots of other interesting information. Uh, where can people go to see that, and um, and perhaps contact you if they're if they're interested in further pursuing some of these issues? Yeah, absolutely. My website is the best place. It's the central for all the information, and be able to reach me, and sign up for my newsletter, which I send out a blog once a month as well as sometimes if I'm speaking or doing other events, I'll send out notices from that. So that's www.drlizmd.com, D-R-L-I-Z-M-D.com. Perfect. Yeah. Well, that's great. And uh, this will also be in the uh, comments uh, uh, below the, the video if people uh, uh, need to pick that up. Uh, this has been fascinating. Uh, uh, there's so much information that, of course, you have the expertise in, but it's great for us to be able to share it with our audience and uh, maybe make it more understandable and that there's hope and that they should seek out people like yourself and other experts uh, to help them with things that they thought were just something they have to live with. This has really been great. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.